Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be updating you guys on our tiny pot of Darlingtonia Californica, or otherwise known as the Cobra Lily. So let's start the video. So if you're new to this channel, you probably won't know about these guys. Well, these guys are actually one of the most amazing cannabis plants that, you know, that, in my opinion. They are one of the most beautiful and unique cannabis plants because they make a little picture that kind of stands upright and looks like a cobra. That's where they get the name Cobra Lily from. So yeah, of course, it's very interesting and a unique plant, but these guys are not the easiest to actually grow or actually acquire either because of how unique and rare they are. I actually got these seeds about one year ago and we sowed these guys together in March and then they germinated for us in April and now it is July so it's been three months since they germinated and they have finally produced their first leaves and are well on the way to producing their second leaves. But let's talk a little bit more about how I actually got to be able to have such rare and unique cannabis plants. So just to let you guys know, before we start talking about the story of how I actually got to have these guys, I just wanna remind you guys that at the end of the video, we will be dressing our plants. We will be putting on their foil little sleeves. It's a cat. So we're putting on these sleeves because it is now the middle of winter. It is July. Or maybe it's the second month of, it is the second month of winter. So. That means that we have passed the winter solstice and that also means that it will slowly get more and, you know, get more, more I can't say this, it's slowly going to get brighter and brighter heading towards the end of spring and obviously into, into the end of winter and into the beginning of spring. So obviously that means that there will be more sunlight on some of our pots and some of our plants really do prefer to have cold roots. Obviously our darling Tonias are one of them. So we will just be putting these guys back onto these plants because we made these actually quite a while ago, but there was, this was before winter had started. So I didn't put them on, but now that our plants are growing and they're getting pretty big and we found out that foil is actually fine for our plants. Yeah, I'll be putting these guys back on. So make sure you stay to the end of the video. And also I will update you guys on our Drosophilum seeds. They're starting to grow now very, very quickly. These guys, I think they are actually pretty quick growers once they start actually growing, which, you know, may take up to nine months for them to germinate. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that they are quick growers and you guys will see how much growth they already have now. So let's continue talking about our little darling Tonias over here, our little pot of them. So before I left South Africa, I really wanted to make sure that once I moved over to Australia that I actually had some plants that I could grow. And you know, I had a, a, a decent sized collection back in South Africa. I got to the point where the collection is big enough for you to say, I don't know how many plants I have, it's too many to remember or to count. So yeah, maybe around 50 to 100, you know, different species of plants is what I had, which is actually not that much. Our collection outside, it's four trays, there's about 80 different pots there. And it honestly doesn't look like that much. And it's, you know, it's quite small actually. So what I decided to do is that because I wanted to take all of the seeds and plants with me, but obviously moving to Australia, you can't take plants with you because they have very, very strict biosecurity rules. I started to think of different ways that I could, you know, take these kind of plants with me, but also not break any laws. So that's when I started doing some research on, you know, importing plants into Australia. And obviously you can do it. You just have to make sure that you follow their rules, which means that you have to make sure that the seeds are clean, that they're labeled properly, and that they are species that are actually allowed into the country and they have to be in like plastic bags so that they can obviously see through it to see if there's any bugs in them and whatever. So yeah, I was in South Africa and I was growing out all my other plants and whatnot, but all my plants that I had were either still young, so I had Darlingtonia, but they were babies still. They, they were nowhere near flowering, so I couldn't get any seeds from them. And I obviously wanted some nice different plants to bring into Australia with me instead of just, you know, just different types of Drosera capensis and Drosera spatulata. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know why I nearly died. 
So yeah, as I said, so obviously it had different plants like that too, but I did not have anything else which would be seen as very unique or very like a collector's item, like the Darling Tonia, for example, or even some of the other plants we have, Saracenias. Those guys, I didn't have any seeds of them, obviously, because the plants that I had were all babies too. So this is when I started to decide and think about buying seeds from someone in the country, or maybe from some people overseas and bring it into South Africa before I take it with me to Australia. And that's what I actually did do. I actually know almost all of the cannabis plant vendors in South Africa. Sorry, you guys. You keep tilting your head every now and then. So obviously these people are people that I know in South Africa who obviously sell the plants. But the issue is that they didn't have any seeds at that time which were you know, pretty unique or different or just weren't sold out. So this is when I started to look at international markets of people who may be selling the plant. Because I actually have some family who lives in Europe. So that means that when they came to visit me in South Africa and help me pack up all my stuff to leave the country, they'd be able to bring the seeds with them into South Africa and obviously give them to me and then I'll take them with me obviously here to Australia. And that's what happened. I actually contacted a couple people who are on some of the Facebook groups and I asked them, hey, do you guys have any different seeds available? What kind of seeds do you have? I want something that isn't just a Drosera capensis or Drosera bonata, some of these boring species, which everyone basically has anyway. I wanted some things that were unique. And obviously they said that they had some Darlingtonia seeds available. So I was like, yes, please. These guys are super, super awesome plants to have. They're very unique. They're quite difficult to grow. If you can get the right requirements, they're not that difficult to grow. But of course, they are also a collector's item. So I decided to obviously get some seeds from them and obviously my family brought them to me and I brought them here to Australia. Now this is when I started actually stratifying all of our seeds together. You guys may remember if you've been following the channel for a while that I actually stratified them with you. These Darlingtonias, they need a cold stratification period. And what this mimics or makes the seeds realize is that, hey, it's winter, it's cold now, and the next period that you're about to feel is warmth, which is summer and spring. So obviously by putting them in the fridge, you... This bird, guys. By putting them in the fridge, you make them think that they just had winter, and obviously when you take them out, it's gonna be obviously warmer than the fridge, so they're gonna think that that is now spring and summertime, and that means that they'll start growing, and this works for many different plants too. So obviously that's what we did on in March, the 18th of March, I think it was. And then we left them outside and then it took them a whole month for them to start germinating. And that was when we did our species spotlight on these guys. And obviously they have grown a lot since then. When I eventually took these guys out of the fridge, and you guys may remember, hopefully if you watch the videos, that I had them covered in a little bit of bubble wrap to help keep the humidity up so that they could you know, get used to the lower humidity of being outside. And obviously it worked perfectly fine. These guys are growing super, super well. They've made their first trap, as I said, which is always an extremely good thing to see with your little plants, that it shows that they're growing well, they have what they need, they're doing what they want. But the thing is, is that they have been growing now in winter time. And this means that they have been experiencing the colder weather, which is what they do prefer. But I'm also now very, very worried for the summertime because that is when most people say that they struggle the most. But as I said, if you can give them the right requirements, they'll be fine. So I have grown these guys before in the past. I actually had about, I had five seeds, I think. I bought five seeds and two, no, three seeds germinated. One died off because it was very weak. So I had two plants remaining and I was able to look after these guys really, really well. In the young stages of their life, I actually grew them for one year. And within that one year, they went from obviously being babies to having adult pitches, which is an amazing accomplishment to do within one year. As these guys are actually very, very slow growers, which actually you can tell because these guys have only been growing for, for what, three months now and they only have one leaf. So it just shows how slow of growers they actually are. These guys, they have been growing just fine. They're in a mixture of sphagnum moss and perlite. It is a ratio of one is to one. And I've been keeping them literally outside in the full sun with all the other plants, just like they need, and been watering them with rainwater. And we now have a lot of plants. I didn't want to count how many we had when they first started germinating, because this would mean that we would count more, and then you know some of them may or may not die off, and then it's like counting 
what counting your chickens before they hatch or whatever it is. So let's start counting how many plants we actually have now. So we have about 30 plants. Now that is obviously a lot of Darlingtonias. That is awesome. I really love these guys. So it's great to have so many of them. And yeah, definitely we're gonna have a lot of big pots in the future full of these guys. But I am expecting a couple of them to die off. I mean, sometimes they can't really get out of their seeds properly and this is just natural selection of the ones that are just not very strong growers. But they are all looking pretty damn good right now. So I do think that they will manage just fine and do well. Now I've grown these guys in peat and perlite before. And that was the plants that I was speaking about earlier, the guys which I had grown in South Africa from obviously babies into adult sized pitches within one year. Those guys, I grew them in peat and perlite, but what I found when they were growing in that mixture is that they grow very, very slowly. I, I wasn't really certain, you know, what other mixture to use. I kind of just defaulted and just got whatever one it was. But then I did do some more research. I read the book, The Savage Garden, which I recommend that you guys do get. I have a link for it in the description below with links for other different products for peat, perlite, tons of different things. So if you guys do want to get that book, which I do recommend, definitely check out the link below. I read that book and then I found out that what they suggested is the best media for these guys is a mixture of one is to one of sphagnum moss and perlite. So that's what I decided to do. I took those two little seedlings and I unpotted them and then I made the new mixture and I obviously put this mixture into the pot and I put those two little guys into that pot and I just basically said, let's see how they do. I also took them from being inside underneath some grow lights and then I moved them upstairs. Yeah, upstairs because in South Africa I had a greenhouse on the roof. So I moved them up there and that was the Highland greenhouse. So it stayed colder and it was more shaded. So while they were there, in about five to six months, which they were growing there, that is when I really saw them start to take off and grow super, super quickly. And that is also when they created their first adult pitches. And that is the same exact reason why I have all of our seedlings now grown in sphagnum moss and perlite, because obviously I don't wanna mess with their roots too much. I don't wanna have to repot them later on. Just put them straight into the media, which makes them grow the best straight from the beginning and you won't have any issues later on and you won't have to you know take them out the pots and whatever makes it super super easy but essentially i just wanted to update you guys on these guys because i really really like darlingtonias and i'm so glad that we have so many i really hope that eventually we will be able to have nice big pots some nice colony pots filled with these guys and we'll be able to have tons and tons of darlingtonias all around you know the house in the collection everywhere and I really hope that we'll be able to make tons of seeds so that I can share them and sell them to other people and also have lots of plants that I'll be able to sell to people. But I'm super excited to actually bring these guys into Australia because I don't really know many or any people that are really selling these guys a lot. I do see them for sale every now and then. I see a couple of people selling them, but they have very limited amounts. So I'm very, very excited to, you know, have a new gene pool of them as well and just share them with everyone here in Australia too. So let me now show you guys how to put this foil around all of our pots that we will be putting on all the different pots outside so that you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's really easy to put these little, you know, foil things back onto our plants because we've made them previously. Guys, please excuse the damn bird, it never shuts up. Essentially, I should have a second pot here, but you just really want to the cats and carnivorous plants don't mix well because they want to like bite and eat them and stuff so yeah that's very bad for your plants anyway i just want to get the foil up over the sides because we made these with that in mind but it's not important so we get this up here along the sides of the plants and then you kind of like fold it into place so that makes sense you see here i'm just kind of like folding it around the edges so that is nice and tight up against the plant and there we go now whenever the sun hits the sides of this pot the sun will be deflected and hopefully there should be less heat on you know inside this pot i've used it for the darling tonias before they seem to like it a lot so yeah i also use it for drosera regia who really enjoy having colder roots so yeah let's now go and put these on all of our other plants okay guys i just brought you outside to show you our little Drosophilums that are busy sprouting and this is the one that has grown the most. Check that. 
This is how much it has grown within one day. Yesterday was just a little green speck. Today is now, you know, you can actually see the little cotyledons busy forming and Sabato starts standing upright. So they're now starting to sprout. So cannot wait for them to start getting a little bit bigger and we'll eventually move them outside as well when they, most of them start germinating. So let's just put our little darling Tonya back into his spot. Next to the different Saracenas that we have. And now we can put our little foil on top of our Drosera Regi 2. And now we have these three other ones. And these are actually meant for our South American growing Drosera because they also like to be kept a little bit colder. So we have Drosera tor tormentosa, Drosera velosa, and Drosera latifolia, which all need to have this. Is it latifolia? Hmm. Okay, let me just double check for you guys. Okay, guys, so I just checked. It is actually tormentosa, latifolia, velosa, and a tentaculata back there. They all need the foil. But I don't know why I didn't create enough foil for all of them. So yeah, I'm gonna have to make more in another video. But since we have these guys outside and everything, let's just do that real quick. And there we go guys, these four pots are all over here. They all have their foil on and our darling Tonya that's down there. And I just need to get one more piece of foil for that car back there. But anyway, we'll do that some other time. So there we go guys, that is it for today's update on the darling Tonya Californica or otherwise known as the Cobra Lilies. I really hope that these guys start doing really, really well. Seeing as it's starting to get, you know, brighter and more sunny because obviously we passed the winter solstice. So if you guys enjoyed the video or you found some new information, please remember to leave a like. And if you want to actually follow, you know, us and join the whole adventure of growing all these new plants together and learning about all the unique stories and everything about them, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. So I'll see you guys in the next episode.